I want to welcome everybody. My name is Michael Gray. I'm the pastor here at the Word of God Christian Ministries Church. And I'm excited about how life is moving forward and how things are moving forward and how things are opening up. But I'm also very, very serious about staying uh, as, as conscious of, 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 of the virus still being there and the challenges that are still there. And I want you to do the same. I know it's exciting to be able to get out the house and go to these different places, but be careful um, uh, and pay attention to what you're doing. And then remember some things you don't have to do. Give it some time and, and be patient, but move by the Holy Spirit most of all, because everybody's got an opinion and everybody think about how we should do things and what we should do. And, but just trust God. And that's what I'm talking about today is the necessity to trust God and trusting God. So I want to get into that, but I want you to be encouraged. I pray that all is well in your households. I pray that, that, that the unity and the love and the grace and the mercy and the kindness one toward another is there in the midst of your family in the name of Jesus Christ. And uh, if there's anything there that is not of God, we uproot that now. We curse that thing. We, we render it null and void. And, and, and then what we do is we plead the blood of Jesus. You remember I said to you last week that, that when God called that, told Israel to get that sacrifice of um, uh, that lamb because death, the death angel was coming through to kill all the firstborn of, of, of uh, Egypt. He told them to take that blood of that, of that lamb and, and put it on the doorpost on the doorpost. Well, Jesus is our sacrificial lamb. And that's why we plead the blood of Jesus and, to, and we believe in God that it'll stop death. We, 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 we plead the stripes of Jesus Christ because we believe in God that it'll cause, it'll bring forth healing. And I do believe that the healing is, is when you say, when you say that, hey, I, by his stripes I'm healed, then you're saying you're putting a defense in place to keep us healed. And of course I said, you know, the, the soul is, is when he's, what Jesus is actually talking about, the cognitive, the way we function, the way we interact with God. But also he went about throughout the land healing all sicknesses and all disease. So I want you to plead the blood of Jesus and I want you to declare that by his stripes I'm healed. That is critical, that is important because it works and you want it to work. I know that, you know, we, we, look to, we look to so many things, but let's look to God right now and let's get victory. Uh, I want to pray, um, uh, and then I want to, and I'm going to be praying all week next week because we're anticipating coming back in the building soon. So now it's time to really go into prayer. So I'll be praying on the conference line as well. I'll be praying on, on, uh, on Facebook Live. We'll be praying uh, all week um, uh, next week, and so if you, can, if you can be a part of that, That'll be good, but I want you to pray before you become a part of it, before you interact, because we need to be praying and, and we need to be trusting God. So let us pray and, and, and uh, let us get into the word. Heavenly Father, right now we humble ourselves in the name of Jesus Christ. And Father God, we thank you, we bless you, we glorify you. Oh, Father God, we give you the honor, we give you the glory, we give you the praise today because you are God. Here we are, we're still here, and Father God, we're still able to function. And Father God, we lift up every one who has had you made a decision to bring with you or that they've left the earth we pray for these families that are still here god we're asking that you'll strengthen the hearts of, of the people who've lost loved ones we we ask that you'll strengthen the hearts of people who cannot connect with their family members properly because of the sickness of the illnesses father god we're asking for healing to go forth in the believers families god in the name of Jesus Christ, because we know you to be the God that heals us. We know that by the stripes of Jesus Christ, we are healed, Father. Father God, we rebuke that sadness, and, and we are asking God even for joy, because we know to be with you is not a bad thing, and it's actually a good thing. So, so but, it, but we miss people when they leave. It hurts us when they leave. So, Father God, we need you to encourage our hearts now that that, that, that we, can, we can stand and we can function and we can finish the course. We can, we can do what you called us to do. I left us here to do in the name of Jesus Christ. Oh, Father God, we rebuke a spirit of suicide. Mm, or that God, I rebuke. Suicide is not of God. You don't have to kill yourself. I rebuke that spirit. That's a spirit. I rebuke it out of every household, out of, out of, a, the, 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 out of every family. In the name of, I curse that thing. In the name of Jesus Christ, Father, and we just give you the honor, the glory, and the praise, and the praise for life and the abundance of life. Father God, for looking beyond the moment and beyond the hour and making it through. In Jesus' name, we thank you, God, for the spirit of encouragement, too. And, and, and Father God, we just give you the honor, the glory, and we give you the praise. Now, Father, this time for your word to go forth. 
Therefore, I decrease in prayer that you might increase. I really need to be you, God. Holy Spirit, use my vocal cords. Use every gesture and, and, and speak your word. And then open every ear that it might hear what you're saying to that particular ear. Open every eye that it might see what you the, perceive the things that you're speaking to them. And, and Father God, open every heart that it might receive the revelation that you're giving. Because you know everybody that you have brought forth to hear this word and you have a particular portion or a particular word for each and everybody. So Father God, I'm asking for the revelation of that word in the name of Jesus Christ. And Father God, now I give you the honor, I give you the glory, and I give you the praise for the victory in this. In Jesus' name, amen. Oh man, I've got a word today. I want to go over to Psalms 62 and it's talking about really trusting the Lord, trusting God and trusting his promises and his plans for our lives. Over in Psalms 62 it says, truly my soul, and I'm going to start at verse 1, my soul waiteth upon, upon God, for from him cometh my salvation. My soul waiteth upon God, from him cometh my salvation. He only is my rock and my salvation. He is my defense. I shall not be greatly moved. He, uh, how long will you imagine mischief against a man? You shall be slain, uh, all of you, as, as, a, as a boy wall shall you be and as a as a tutoring fence and then i want to go down to verse five it says this my soul wait thou only upon god for my expectation is from him he only is my rock and my salvation he is my defense i shall not be moved verse seven says this in god is my salvation in god is my salvation and my glory the rock of my strength and, and my refuge is in God. Now, this is the part that I really want to, that I'm going to be talking about, trusting God. He says this, trust in him and, and trust in God at all times, you people. Pour out your hearts before him. God is a refuge for us, Shalat. Um, trusting God is, is, is going to be critical. A lot of times I think about why is it challenging to really and fully trust God? Because trust is not a common thing. I mean, trust is, you have to build trust. You have to work through a process and you have to develop trust. And, and then you have to get to know God in order to trust God. And, and a lot of times we'll say we trust God, but we, 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 in actuality, we are not actually trusting God. There are a lot of benefits in trusting God. I want to talk about that. But first, I want to share some thoughts that God gave me. And, and, and it says this, to trust God is to do God's will. Get that. That's the first thing he gave me. It is better said to surrender to God's will by the power of the Holy Spirit. It's hard for man to do God's will. We, we really cannot do God's will because God is different than we are. We literally have to trust the Holy Spirit who indwells us to do God's will, to trust God through us, to, because we, are, we have to learn God and it's, it's through a development. So, so man can, can, can do God's will only by yielding to the Holy Spirit. Okay, so I, and I've heard people say that, you know, God has a permissive will. I disagree with that very strongly. I don't believe God has a permissive will. I believe that God has an exact perfect will and we have a will. And I think that's the challenge. We need to give, we need to say God's got a permissive will to allow our activities and our dysfunction. But, but he doesn't because God is, has empowered us to really manifest his will in and through us. So. Why would he have a permissive will? He don't have a permissive will, that's just the way. So I believe that God has a divine and a holy and a complete will, a perfect will, and we can only see it manifest as we yield. Uh, Jesus said, you remember when he was in the Garden of Gethsemane, Jesus was having this battle uh, with his flesh. It was time for him to go to the cross, and, and, and the biggest issue was, and I don't think it was a cross, it was being separated from God because of the sin of mankind. But he had to really trust God in order to make it to the cross and, and, and take on our sins. So the scripture says that, that he, um, he was in the Garden of Gethsemane and he was praying to God. and He was asking God to take a cup away from him. But eventually he said to God, he said, he said, Father, thy will be done. Thy will be done. When you trust God, it's all about God's will being done. Uh, trusting God is, is, is saying, I do not know, get this now, what God is going to do next. Regardless, I'm all in. Hear this. You don't have to know what God is doing. You have to just get in his divine will and trust him. Then as you move forward, this is trusting God. In faith, as you move forward, you will learn or we learn that God was doing something great on our behalf. 
You know, some things don't make sense. When God says something like love your enemies, pray for those who spitefully use, that doesn't add up or calculate in reality for us. And so, so it's hard to do because we've learned to fight and resist and protect ourselves. In actuality, we're not protecting ourselves. We are actually causing ourselves more harm by trying to put our confidence in our know-how and our own wisdom and our own emotions, what we think, what we feel. And so we're deceived and then we're away from God. So, so let me give you that again. Trusting God is, is saying, I do, I do not know what God is going to do next. Uh, regardless, I am all in. Uh, so, so I want to go to 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse, verse 9. It says, we don't even know when we really trust God, to, 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 to love God is to trust God. We have no idea what God has in store for us when we really trust God. 1 Corinthians 2, 9 says, but as it's written, I have not seen, nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God hath prepared for them that love him. To love God is to trust God. To trust God is to love God. To love God is to trust God. Trusting God is doing what God say to do. By the power of the Holy Spirit, we cannot do what God say do. If we could do what God say do, we would never need Jesus, we would never need the Holy Spirit. But because we, because we can't, in actuality, on our own power, that's why God gave us the Holy Spirit. That's why he sent us Jesus. So in Christ Jesus, we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. But we have to yield to that. So we can't just, we can't just do it, but, 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 but trusting God is doing what God say to do. Doing what God say to do when, God, when, when, when we know God has said it. Sometimes we'll make up stuff, you know, based on what we're going through, what we're feeling. We have a tendency to like, oh, you know, well, God told me to do this. And, God, and, and it's just like a bunch of uh, a baloney. But, but the problem with the reason we do that is because we, we have such desperation and we have so many needs and we're thinking, OK, but then God has a, the plan of God is totally different than the plan of man. And so we miss God right there. And so it's important that we understand that we need to do what we know God has said. Now, let me say this to you. How you will know is his word, prayer, relationships, intimacy with God. Because we, you know, we can imagine, I mean, the imagination is amazing. We can think some things up and say God said it. And next thing you know, we're thinking God lied. God didn't say it. We said, so we have to, we have to trust what we know God has spoken, what we know God has said. We cannot, the man is so, so amazing how God created man that we really do have a vast imagination. We can think all kinds of stuff. We can, we can, now let me get, let me get back to this. We can only hear and understand the instant instructions. That's what we have to obey. It's when we hear God's voice, we need to obey it then. So we can only hear and understand the instant instructions from God by yielding to the Holy Spirit. And by yielding to the Holy Spirit. I want to go to Proverbs. I want to go to Proverbs and I want to, I want to read chapter 3. I want you to go to Proverbs with me. Get your Bibles and I hope you've already got them. But I want to go to chapter 3 and I'm going to start at verse 1 and, 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 uh, and of course I wanted 5 and 6 on my interest. But, I, but as I was reading it, I felt like I could just give it all Give it all to us. It says, my son, forget not my law, but let your heart keep my commandments for length of days and long, and long life and peace shall they add to you. Let not mercy and truth forsake you. Bind them about your neck. Write them upon the table of thine heart. And that's where you got to treat folk right and you got to operate in truth. You got to operate in love. He says, so shalt so shall thou find favor and good understanding in the sight of God. How? How by, by allowing mercy and truth to, to manifest and come God's mercy. Be merciful and be kind and, 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 and deal in truth. He said when you, when you do that, when you keep his word, he said you shall, you shall find favor and good understanding in the sight of God and in the sight of men. Now verse 5 is a critical part because in order to do that, you've got to trust the Lord do it. He said trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not unto your own understanding, and in all your ways acknowledge him, and he'll direct your path. That's critical, brothers and sisters, because, see, see, when God talks about directing your path, you're trusting the Holy Spirit to literally lead you step by step into the promises of God. Um, next thing I want to give you is one thing we need to learn is God does not go along with our plans because his plans are always better and greater. God does not, see, 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 you cannot dictate to God how it ought to go. God, I want you to do this. God, I want you to do that. God doesn't go for that stuff. God is God all by himself. He's sovereign. He made us. I mean, he, made, he knows what's best for us. This, this is something I wish you could, you could get in your spirit. I wish you could get it down in your heart. This is something that I'm still learning, I'm developing in, that God is my creator. I mean, even though he made me well and, and he gave me a mind, he gave me a, a life, a, a body, and a, a functionality, but God is greater than I am. God made me. 
God made you. And that's the thing we have to honor when we approach God. We have to realize that God knows better than I know because he made me. He knows how to, if something breaks down, he knows how to fix me again. If my mind go in a certain way, he knows how to bring it all back together again. If life's like it's just in chaos and it's gone crazy, then he knows how to put it all back together again, but not the way I tell him. And that's important that we understand that, that God knows what he's doing. Uh, Jeremiah 29 and 11 says this, For I know the plans I have for you. This is God, declares the Lord. Plans for welfare are, and, and not for evil to give you a future and a hope. We can only realize the plans of God for our lives by trusting God. By trusting God. By trusting God. There are great results when we trust God. I mean, you can, you can experience life like, and, and a lot of times we fall down. We go through things. We get hurt. Uh, we thought that somebody would love us. Somebody would be, you know, would always be in our lives. Somebody would, would, uh, would, would keep their word. Uh, and we always get, we can always get hurt. And then what it does, this is the saddest thing about all of that is, it causes us to distrust God. This is what is important when we're talking about, and I want to give you these benefits, I'm going to be done. But this is what's important when you talk about trusting God. It's very important to, to understand the process is little bit by little bit Watch and see if God tells you something and you receive it in your spirit, watch God bring it to pass. God is not man. Let me tell you something. Man will let you down if he don't have God and he'll let you down if he have God. He, he'll let you down because man is man. God is never meant for man to be our God. A lot of people, are, well, you know, my husband, he just really, I had to get away from him because he just really, my wife, she just, well, listen, your expectations of them was wrong. Now, I didn't think they would do that. Well, you, that was your... See, see, that's man. The Bible says a fool who puts his trust in the arm of man. God asks us to love man and trust God. So that's what's critical. We need to love. And my boss did this and my children. I didn't know they was going to do that in my mind. Listen, forgive them. Ask, ask, ask God to forgive you for putting that kind of confidence and, and putting that burden on them and, and being a part of their fall as well. And ask God now to give you himself so that now you can have a proper expectation out of people. It's not so important to expect people to love you. It's more important to love people. Jesus said, they'll know you're my disciples by your love. When you love people, when you put your love real, and it's gotta be filtered through Christ, that's when you are not hurt by a lot of the foolishness that go on in the world. You have to filter your trust through Christ. You have to trust the Holy Spirit when they say, now they're gonna make a mistake, they're gonna mess up. That, that one ain't real. That ain't true. Sometimes because we have these fantasies, we, we want everything to be different. Let me give you these benefits of trusting God. We can realize the plans of God for our lives by trusting God. Now I want to look at the results of, 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 of the promises of, 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 um, of God to those who trust him. Number one is God promised to empower those who trust him. He, he empowers us to you know, to, to live and to overcome and to see life from another perspective. And Jeremiah 17, verses 7 through 8 says, says this, happy, this is the common English Bible, happy are those who trust in the Lord, who rely on the Lord. They will be like trees planted by streams whose roots reach down in the water. They won't fear drought when it comes. Their leaves will remain green. They won't be stressed in the time of drought. Like now, you know, this is a time now if you really keep your eyes on God, God is taking care of you. You, you're okay, things are well, you know. So, so when you put your trust in God, he promised, he, 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 one of his promises are that he will empower you to keep thriving and moving forward and having courage and move on. And the next thing he does is he promised to, to grant us the desires of our heart. And I, and I want to read Psalms 37, 3 and 4. So the first thing is he promised to empower those of us who trust him. The second thing is that he, he gives us, he grants us the desires of our heart. Uh, Psalms 37, 3 and 4 says this, Trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and feed on his faithfulness. Delight yourself also in the Lord, and he shall give you the desires of your heart. Commit your way. See, this is what people say. Well, God's going to give me the desires of my heart. Well, he, he says that, but he ain't talking to just everybody. He's talking to folks who are going to commit their way to him. Like if your way is, is, is wayward and you, you, you got sin in your life, you don't want to give up, you don't want to acknowledge He's not talking to you. This promise don't go. Like, this promise doesn't go to you. I mean, <laughs> I mean I'm just being, first he wants you to, he said, commit your way unto the Lord. He said, trust him. You know, he said, um, uh, he, and, and he shall bring it to pass. But if you don't, if we don't commit our way to the Lord, if we don't allow the Holy Spirit to convict us and 
help us to realize, hey, you're missing it here. You need to get that right first. Because our heart's desires will change as our obedience change. And that's why it's easy to be ushered into our heart's desire. Because once our obedience change, then God can shift us by his spirit into a place of blessings. So the, the third thing is that, that God he gives us joy when we, when we trust him. We, it, he gives us joy when we trust him. Uh, God promised to provide joy. Over in Proverbs chapter 16, verse 20, whoso, whoso, who, whoever gives heed to instructions prospers. Whoever listens to God, they prosper. And blessed is the one who trusts in the Lord. Who trusts in the Lord. Blessed is the one who trusts in the Lord. So, so get this. See, I, bless, the word blessed means happy. That's why I say you give you joy. Blessed means happy and it means empowered to prosper. Uh, so, so bless is, is, but also to be blessed is to be envy. <laughs> when you're really blessed, you, you, envy will come from everywhere, but that's not your prerogative. You can see it, watch yourself from it, plead the blood of Jesus over yourself, but sometimes God won't move. I keep saying this, and it's important. God won't always move your enemies out your way, out of your life, because, see, God prepares a table. He gives a crown of life. So he wants your enemies to see that, that because you've been faithful, you kept loving them, you kept forgiving them, you wouldn't do certain things. He wants your enemies to see because of this, this disposition, this obedience, I'm blessed so he'll prepare your table in the presence of your enemies. And so you can't get rid of all your enemies. Number, number four is this, God promised peace to those who trust in him. He tried, he, peace, now the word peace, the, 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 the word peace, there's shalom. Shalom means nothing missing and nothing uh, lacking. The conscience is very powerful and we're always thinking about what I don't have, what I don't have, no, no. When, when, you get, when you get this peace that from trusting God and having a relationship and intimacy with God, when you get the peace, what literally happens is this. You, you, they're, they're, when you are not as conscious of what you think you're supposed to have, it can come into your life. When you sit there and worry and worry, the, even Jesus said, take no thought for what you're going to put in. Take no thought for what you're going to put on. Take no thought for what you're going to eat. He said, but your father in heaven, he's very conscious of that. He said, first seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added to you. So God's promise, he promised peace. When, when we're having challenges in our finances and we, we feel like in our mind is just trouble, like you, you can have $500 in the bank and that's enough, but you want 5000 So you start worrying about, I don't have 5000 but that's just, you know, it ain't going to come until you get your mind off of it and say, God, thank you for the 500 and take joy in the fact that you can go out and buy you something to eat and take care of your bills and take care of yourself. So, so we rob our peace through worration, but we gain our peace through trusting God. Uh, the, the fifth thing is this. God promised to foil the work of our enemies. Sometimes, you know, I said that when you're blessed, it comes with envy. Sometimes people will plot. Satan will use people to plot and plan. Don't get deep with this. Oh, everybody's against me. Whatever. People are... <laughs> I mean, people, there's some people that are against you. But the Bible literally says God for me is more than the whole world against me. So when you focus on, you know, who's against you and all that, you don't know nobody's. I don't even know people's. So I don't even know my own heart. You know, and so when you get focused on that rather than trusting God to protect you from it and, and keep them away from you or, or stop whatever plans they've got to hurt you, then, then, then you, when you're focusing, you allow all that stuff in your life. But when you focus on God and really get this in your spirit and hear this word and trust God, then you are defeating whatever plans they are by, the, by your trust in God. God is the one who can take care of you, change their minds, or God can take them in another direction. But it says, this, this is what the scripture says in Psalms 37, verses 30, 39 through 40. But the salvation of the righteous... The salvation of the righteous is of the Lord. He is their strength in the time of trouble. People will plot, they'll plan, they'll, they'll say things about you, but let God deal with you. Don't have to answer those, you don't have to answer that stuff. You just let God deal with it. Let God deal with it all the way to the end and God will bring you out. And the Lord shall help you and deliver them. He shall deliver them from the wicked and save them because they, they trust in him. So he'll deliver you from the wicked. Sometimes people will get out of your life and you'll be like, where's so and so? No, let them, let them, let them go. Don't, don't go back chasing nobody, God, especially during this season while, we, while we've been quarantined and now you're coming up out of it. And, and don't be going reaching for folk. The folk that you ain't been talking to, you sort of been able to release them and let them go. Don't go back. 
Just go on now and, and let God bless you. Now, the sixth thing is that God promised security to those who trust him. Security to those. God provides a greater security than anything that we can imagine. Our alarm system, our door locks, whatever we've got that's securing us, God is greater. Our guns, our, our ammunition, all our swords, God is greater. Over in Psalms chapter 29, verse 25, the fear of man brings a, a snare. A snare means you get caught up in, you know, and, you, and when you're afraid of somebody, you, you treat them different. You know, you, you cannot be kind to them. You cannot be nice to them. Everything about your relationship with them is fake. That's a snare. And, and so if, you, if you've got anything in your life that can keep you in fakeness, it can keep you out of real relationship with God. And so when you're afraid of people or anybody, it puts you in a snare. You become defensive and you, you talk to them. So you can talk to everybody else nice, but you have to talk to them mean. You have to be just, you have to be on the guard all the time. No, 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 you don't. You need to forgive them, forgive you, and ask God to take that out of your life and trust God to protect you and, and to keep you and to keep them in, in the name of Jesus Christ. This is the last one I want to give you. The, God promises us mercy when we trust him. Mercy is where we get what we don't deserve, where God, where we should have gotten this. But, by, you know, the Bible said, blessed is the man who sins and not and put it under him. So, so what God does is we, we are, we are, he gives us the wisdom to say, God, you know, I know I did this, but Jesus already paid the price for it. And you said in your words, you've forgiven me for my sins, my past, present, and future sins. And in forgiveness, I accept the total forgiveness because he's already redeemed me. He's already atoned me. He's already paid the price that was required for me to have life with you and, and to prosper and to move forward. So, so, so that's mercy. See, that's the mercy of God. So when you, when you, when you really trust God, and a lot of people don't, you, you go through all these rituals when you're saying, well, you know, I got to go do this. And I got, no, listen, confess it. Agree with God that is singing. Ask God to purge you of the sin and then move forward. That's what, and then trust his mercy. Just don't, don't expect for people, you're going to get this back. No, 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 no. no. It, it, Jesus has already taken it. He's already, ain't no get back. You've been, it's, it's, when we got those in that seal of forgetfulness and he forgives you, he washes you clean. Don't, don't yield to your own mind and other people and put yourself in slavery and bondage to other people. No, don't do that. Just stay committed to God and, and walk upright and clean and let him purge you and purify you. So, so, so this is it. Psalms 32, verse, verse 10, it says, uh, God, God, God is, he promises us, us, us mercy. And, and, and so he does and he, and he keeps that. It means that he gives us better than what we deserve. Um, uh, but this is, a, this is a thought that I want to leave with you, brothers and sisters. Trusting God will manifest these promises. When I really trust God, then, then, then everything comes, the peace comes, the, the, the defending me from the wicked, the securing me from, from uh, mercy comes. All, all these things come in, and, uh, and when they do, it, it, was, it was seven I gave you, it, and, and it's, it's empowerment. It's, uh, he read the desires of our heart. We'll get the joy. We'll get the peace. We'll, he'll fight the wicked on our behalf. He'll secure us. And then it's mercy. Hear this in the name of Jesus Christ. It's going to come. But it's only going to come as I'm trusting God. No trust. None of these promises. You have to, and you have to trust God. It's a, it's a process. Keep learning God. Pay attention to when, when God has protected you and give him glory for that. When God has kept something that you, you were afraid and God took the fear away, give him glory for that. You learn to trust him through, pro, through processing and, and going through it and then telling him thank you. Telling him thank you. Say, God, I really thank you for, you know, I didn't know how he was going to make a way that I, I could pay this. I didn't know, but you did. I thank you. That, that's how you learn to trust God. A little bit by a little bit, you, you pay attention to what God is doing and then you give him glory. In the name of Jesus Christ, brothers and sisters, I want to pray with you. I, I believe that if we can trust God in this season, we'll, we'll, we'll be done with it. And, and then we'll be back on track and doing some things that are, that are really important to us and that bring us joy again. Uh, Heavenly Father, right now we bless you, we glorify you, we worship you, we praise you. We appreciate you, Father, for the word today. We're asking, Father God, that you touch every soul, touch every heart, touch every mind. And to those that are not saved, brothers and sisters, listen. If Jesus Christ is not the Lord of your life and you desire him to be, I want you now to take a moment. I want you to just say, Jesus, please come into my, into my heart. Be my Lord and be my Savior. Jesus, I really need you. I need you, Jesus. And then the Bible said, if I would confess with my mouth 
the Lord Jesus and believe in my heart. The word confession in the Bible means that I already know and I'm agreeing with God that Jesus came through this virgin birth. You know, he was birthed through a virgin's birth. He, he came through a holy seed. The, the Holy Spirit put Christ in Mary. And then, then he lived a holy life. And then he, he was beaten for my transgressions. I mean, he, he took everything that, that, that I could do or I will do, or I might do in the future. He, he, took, he did everything that was necessary to be the sacrificial lamb on my behalf. And then, then he got, they put him on a cross. They hung him on a cross to take away every curse. They, put, they poked him in his side so that his blood and his water would come out and it shook the earth because he turned life around. He rent the temple. He, he reestablished life again. Then they took him off the cross and put him in a borrowed grave because he wasn't going to stay there. And then he went on down and he, he took back the power from the enemy. And then he got up. And because of him, I have eternal life. When I confess Christ, that's what I'm saying I believe. So here's an opportunity for you, brothers. So God, forgive me for my sins and my trespasses. Jesus, I do believe. Jesus, I do. I believe. Therefore, Jesus, I'm going to confess you are the Lord of my life because of what you've done on my behalf to give me life again. I do believe because God raised you from the dead. I have eternal life. I trust you, Jesus. Thank you for today being my Lord and Savior. And Father God, I give you the honor, the glory, and the praise for the victory in my life, brothers and sisters. If you've done that, you need to be baptized. You need to be merged. You also need a church home. I'm praying that God will bless you with church home. Now, we, you know, we've got to do our offering. We, we, it's necessary that, that we do our offering. Uh, and I want, I want us to, and I want you to give. You can give online. I'm going to tell you. You can text. Uh, this is the number, 678-661-5332. 678-661-5332. Five three three two. You can text. Give your give your best gift. And now, first of all, I want to tell you, uh, thank you for those who've been so faithful and committed and dedicated during this time. Uh, it's, it's such an encouragement, such an edification. But I pray that you know when you that you realize the blessings of God through obedience and giving. I pray that you trust God to open up the windows of heaven and, and continuously pour you out a blessing that you can recognize them. I pray that you trust God to. To, to continuously cause men and cause money to keep coming in your life and blessings and holiness to keep coming in your life in the name of Jesus Christ. I give you, 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 and let me give you this again. You can, you can text, you can call the number 678-661-5332. That was real fast, 678-661-5332. And then you can, you can text GIVE, G-I-V, and then you can put the amount of whatever you, you want to do. You want to give your tithe. You want to keep your offering coming. You want to keep, we're going to be back in the building soon. I want you to be praying about that. Remember this week, we're going to be, I'm going to, I'm going to do a call out this evening, and then we're going to talk about, about, um, about what we're going to do moving forward. I love you, and I thank God for you. I pray that you are blessed. I pray that you'll trust God even more. I pray that God will draw you into that place where you can actually trust him. In the name of Jesus Christ, be blessed. I thank God for you, and I'll see you soon.